Okay, fun fact. Do you know that it is very possible for a human to be born with a tail? You see, as very early as the fourth week up until the eighth week of pregnancy, human fetuses are known to have embryonic tails, which gradually shorten and eventually disappear by the eighth week of pregnancy, leaving behind a rudimentary tailbone. Cool, gaga, cool, gaga. Now, there are also a few times, although this happens very rarely, when the embryonic tail persists and fails to disappear beyond the eighth week of pregnancy, such that the baby gets born with a tail. Anyway, true human tails are usually boneless and can very easily be detached or removed with the help of surgery. But again, because they are generally harmless, one can choose to leave it like that without suffering any physical harm. In fact, it will interest you to know that in some countries like India, people who are born with tails are often assigned God status and worshipped. Sensational. Well, this is the first video and it's already getting interesting. Why would you choose to stay with the tail? Would you choose that? If you have a tail, you can tell us in the comment section how is the experience. And to others that don't have a tail, would you like to have one? Let's keep watching, watch to the end. Yo, good memes! In the following video, a man named Jay is resting in his living room when he notices something strange about a doll that's placed on a high shelf. He takes a closer look at this doll and is left deeply disturbed by what he captures. Now the doll in this video, according to Jay, was bought at a thrift store where two other dolls of the same brand were also being sold. But, for some unknown reason, this specific doll was hidden from the rest. Jay suspects that the reason the doll was hidden from sight was because they didn't want anyone buying it. They were afraid this doll might be cursed or even haunted. Now Jay wasn't really sure if this had been the actual reason, but after living with this doll for more than a year, it's become clear to him that this may have been the case. Something isn't right with this doll. While resting in his living room and watching over his child, Jay captures something on camera that leaves him extremely unnerved. Take a look. I think, I think I can see it on here. Hold on. Not stop. Oh, wait, there it is. See if she moves. There it is. Whether you believe the Earth to be flat, globular, hollow, concave, or otherwise, the freedom to independently travel and explore the Earth, from the North Pole to whatever exists south of the South Pole, to any and everywhere else, should be a fundamental and unalienable right. Military vessels near the North Pole and Antarctica have repeatedly barred independent teams of explorers from traveling into these heavily patrolled and restricted waters. The Antarctic Treaty prevents all independent travel south of the 60th degree south latitude, where rebels like Jarl Andahoy and his team have been repeatedly turned around at gunpoint, jailed, and fined for daring to attempt. What is so important in Antarctica that 53 of the most powerful countries in the world have agreed to patrol and enforce harsh restrictions and penalties on anyone who attempts to independently explore it. Why has the entire continent of Antarctica, and everywhere else on Earth below the 60th South Parallel, been caged off from us? The only way we can experience Antarctica is by being a government employee and working at one of their bases, or doing one of their overpriced penguin tours along the Antarctic coast. No one, even these very few humans, is granted the freedom to explore the continent, so even they are clueless as to what may exist at the furthest southern extents of the earth. The world's governments, militaries, media, schools, and literally everyone else except flat earthers claim with conviction and wholeheartedly believe that the South Pole is the southernmost extent of their globe. And by definition, this must be the case, because to continue traveling southwards beyond this southernmost point is tantamount to traveling northwards. If the Earth is not a globe, however, 
and is actually an extended level plain, as claimed by flat earthers, continuing to travel south of the South Pole would not and could not bring the traveler back north. On a flat earth, the traveler would instead continue southwards into unknown southern territories that don't exist on a globe. If NASA, the world's governments, militaries, media, academia, and or anyone else involved in maintaining the legitimacy of the globe concept truly wanted to shut up flat earthers once and for all, this is how easy it would be. Allow for independent travel south of the South Pole or livestream a full south-to-north circumnavigation of the supposed globe starting in Antarctica and traveling south. Show the world's flat earthers that traveling south of the South Pole will somehow bring you north. At the very least, show us what happens when a plane travels perfectly straight in any direction starting from anywhere on Earth for 48 hours. If Earth is truly a ball 24,900 miles in circumference as we are taught, traveling perfectly straight in any direction, starting from anywhere on Earth, at an average flight speed of 550 miles per hour, the globe model claims the plane will circumnavigate the entire circumference and return to its original starting point. On a flat Earth, however, a plane traveling in a perfectly straight line, never deviating left or right, regardless of where it starts or which direction it travels, will eventually reach the Antarctic. Why has such a simple experiment never been performed in aviation history? Are we globe earthers and flat earthers alike, content and complacent enough with what we are told to simply trust it as truth? Children are taught in school that explorers like Magellan and others have traveled in perfectly straight lines eastwards or westwards and eventually arrived back at their starting point. It's universally heralded as proof of the globe and most adults today still believe such circumnavigations have actually occurred. The truth of the matter is, however, that all successful circumnavigations in history, whether by sea or air, have followed the same pattern, which is sailing or flying the most convenient route from port to port, stopping for supplies and refueling, until a complete circle has been made. Not a single sailor or aviator in history has or could travel only in the same one perfectly straight direction and magically arrive back where they began. This ridiculous lie becomes obvious when critically examined, but when taught to young children, successfully bends and warps their minds into accepting globe indoctrination. Unlike the cardinal directions on a compass rose, north, south, east, and west on earth are not simply straight lines separated by 90 degrees. North rather than being an upward shooting arrow, is actually a point, a center point, the center point of the entire Earth known as the geographic North Pole, situated directly below Polaris, the North Pole Star, the only motionless star in the heavens, which marks the exact center point of the sky. South, rather than being a downward shooting arrow, is actually every line tangent to the northern center point, or in other words, every straight line extending outwards from the North Pole heads due south. East and west, rather than being right and left facing arrows, are actually clockwise and counterclockwise circles around the pole. The sun, moon, and stars all rise in the east and set in the west, making perfect circles over and around us every day. As you can observe, they travel in a circular westward path over and around the earth, and do not all travel in a straight leftward direction as suggested by a compass rose. Likewise, navigators since ancient times have used Polaris to guide their ships, knowing that Polaris was the heavenly north pole, south was traveling keeping your back to Polaris, east meant traveling always keeping your left shoulder 90 degrees to Polaris, and west meant traveling always keeping your right shoulder 90 degrees to Polaris. So, Put up, or shut up, globe apologists. If we are truly free, show us what happens when you go straight in a plane for 24 or 48 hours. If Earth is truly a globe, show us what happens when you travel south of the South Pole. We have never been shown or allowed to perform such a simple experiment. If NASA, the world's governments, militaries, media, academia, 
and or anyone else involved in upholding the globe truly wanted to prove their model and shut up every single flat earther once and for all, this is how easy it would be. A sky that is rotating in different ways. Next one. And furthermore, why can't we all see the same stars? There are stars that you can only see in the northern hem way in the, towards the northern hemisphere and stars you can only see in the southern hemisphere. Next one. On a globe, this makes perfect sense. If you're in the northern hemisphere, looking at the North Pole, east is to your right. If you are in the south in southern hemisphere, looking at the South Pole, east is to your left. Next one. And the reason we can't see certain stars is because you can't see through the Earth. Next one. That's why in the Northern Hemisphere, we can't see the Southern Cross. That's why in the Southern Hemisphere, we can't see Polaris. Next one. Almost done. Quick one here. So it actually gets a lot worse than that in the Southern Hemisphere because you've taken a globe and you've unwrapped it. The Southern Hemisphere makes absolutely no sense. People in the Southern Hemisphere who are all looking at the Southern Cross are somehow supposed to be, we're believing that they're all looking in completely different directions and seeing the same object often at the same time. So oh, that is very crazy. I'd like to know what you think. Share your thoughts about it. Because this instead is very controversial. Flat or spherical. Hmm. You know these facts are this story is told to us. It's hard to know what's true, man. But I'd like to know or hear your thoughts about it. Keep watching, watch till the end. Believe it or not, the rumors about UFOs have been alive for almost 400 years now. Back in 1639, the governor of the Massachusetts Bay Colony, John Winthrop, opened his diary and wrote about an unusual event that took place earlier that year. He stated that three men were riding in a boat through the river when they saw a bright dot in the sky traveling quickly. When I stood, it caught fire and was about three yards square. That was one of the first ever recorded UFO sightings with some kind of proof. A few centuries forward, and we have more information about these mysterious flying saucers than ever before. Even though many people never believed in UFOs, everything changed on July 26, 2023, when the House Oversight Committee held a historic hearing about UFOs, or unidentified aerial phenomena as they like to call it. In this hearing, three former military officials told Congress that they believe the government knows much more about UFOs than it is telling the public. The thing that shocked the public even more was when the topic of the government possessing non-human biological matter started. But we'll save that for another time. Let's talk about what a UFO is, or at least what scientists around the world assume it is. UFO stands for Unidentified Flying Object, and no one can really explain how it works, nor how it breaks the laws of physics. A documentary called Bob Laser, Area 51 and Flying Saucers came out in 2018, and it's a story Bob Laser has been telling since 1989. He stated that he had an opportunity to examine an alien craft that runs on an antimatter reactor powered by Muscovium. In this documentary, he draws a sketch explaining how UFOs fly and states he was involved in dismantling one UFO to reverse engineer it. However, he also stated that we're not capable yet of understanding some of the things, specifically about the Muscovium that's better known as Element 115 and the overall manufacturing process of components the craft used. All of this was done in Area 51, according to his words. On top of that, it seems like it will take us quite some time to understand the physics behind UFOs' gravity manipulation. This project was role-separated, which means only one person from each role examined the craft, and it wasn't allowed for them to do it at the same time, so individuals wouldn't have all the information about it. After understanding tens of different sources and assumptions, here's how the UFO might work. Its body is made from metallic quasi-crystal material whose characteristics help beat gravity. And when you bolt three gravity emitters on a UFO's body, you get a system that can fly controllably. Gravity emitters work by oscillating in any direction to maneuver the craft. 
but gravity emitters are useless without a gravity amplifier that sends anti-gravitational waves into the direction emitters are facing. These are some high-tech devices, but the biggest reason why engineers and scientists ensure UFOs are the work of aliens is because you won't find any wiring, wells, bolts, or any kind of nuts on the UFO. It's simply impossible to get this shape out of this kind of material from a single piece, at least for us humans. Or maybe I should say at least for 99.99% .99 of humans. With that being said, with governments from around the world releasing documents and reports on UFOs, and with thousands of sightings each year, it's not questionable if these crafts exist. They do, but still, it'll take us decades, if not centuries, to find out how they actually work. Maybe a lot of this has something to do with the government hiding things from the public, but we're not here to talk about that. Instead, we just want to know the engineering behind these mysterious flying saucers. saucers. So that is just crazy. You can imagine the technology. Someone said the other day in the comment section that they are not worried about small dots in the sky. Man, people have been worried about these small dots in the sky since 500 years or what did they say? So many years ago, man. You should be worried about this stuff. It is, yo, it involves us, man. Share enough from wherever you 